this individual for saying that Obama was a Muslim, not an American citizen. To which Trump responded, I'm not morally obligated to defend Obama from the birthers. He says if the roles were reversed, Obama would not come to his defense. Absolutely right. Here's what he tweeted out. This is a story we have up on Infowars.com from The Hill. Donald Trump tweeted out, I, am I morally obligated to defend the president every time somebody says something bad or controversial about him? I don't think so. That's right. He certainly isn't. And then he went on to say this. He said, this is, not the, this is the first time in my life I've caused controversy by not saying something. <laughs> and finally, he said, if someone made an ass to your controversial statement about me to the president, do you really think he would come to my rescue? Not a chance. But then he went on to say something that did cause more controversy because he pointed out that the real issue was the war on Christians and the war on Christianity. And this is something that's going on globally. This is something we can see in America in terms of intolerance. And if you're not a Christian, if you're not a Muslim, this still should concern you because it concerns how we are going to treat different groups. It concerns the rule of law. It concerns due process. It concerns individual liberties and where they come in conflict. Is there a way that we can maintain each other's individual liberties without stomping on the other person's rights? And we haven't done that very well in this country so far. In most cases, the pendulum swings too far in one way and then swings too far back in the other way. Is it possible for us to find a balance? But when we look at the record of the Obama administration, I don't see a balance there. Now, of course, there's this article from Breitbart saying pro-Christian vow, Trump escalates against the media's Muslim Obama smear. Donald Trump, they say, is hitting back twice as hard as the Democrats. He told the New York Times the bigger issue is that Obama is waging a war against Christians in this country. He went on to say that the question was specifically, the question was given to him, was about training camps. He says the media wants to make this an issue about Obama. The bigger issue is that Obama is waging a war against Christians in this country. They need support. And their religious liberty is at stake, he added. He is absolutely right about that. We have pointed this out many times. As a matter of fact, it's not the first time he said that. If we go back to August the 21st, we had an article on Infowars.com at the time by Kit Daniels. Trump says Muslim immigrants are treated better than Christians. Every immigrant in the United States is being treated better than American citizens. That's the real issue. That's the fundamental issue. He said it's easier for Muslim immigrants to enter the U.S. than Christians fleeing ISIS, Donald Trump pointed out. So this is talking about, when you look at the religion issue, this is talking about whether or not Syrian refugees are going to find a way into the United States. And he was very clear and very accurate at the time to say that it's much easier to get a refugee status coming out of Syria if you're not a Christian. If you're a Muslim, you're going to get a free ticket in. If you're a Christian, not so much. That's what he said at the time. He said, do you know if you're a Christian from Syria, you can't get into the United States? If you're Muslim from Syria, it's one of the easiest places to get into. He says there's assault, there's an assault on anything having to do with Christianity. The PC leftists don't want to use the word Christmas anymore at department stores. Well, look, we've laughed before at many times about Fox's perennial war on Christmas stuff. And it is based on a PC attitude. They want to purge anything that has to do with Christianity. And that includes saying things like Merry Christmas. It's not only annoying, it is actually very dangerous to find this kind of political correctness that purges speech, that purges the free exercise of religion. We have to understand that our country was founded upon the free exercise of religion. That's why most of the people who came here from Europe came here. They came here to escape religious persecution in England. And so that was a key part of much of what made the basis of our law here was based on toleration of different religions. So you have to understand that when we see this being shut down with a people being shamed uh, about what they have to say about the free exercise of religion, of course, one of the groups that really pushes against this is an organization that talks about freedom from religion. That's not what the Constitution says. The Constitution says we have free exercise of religion. Free exercise of religion. Okay, it's freedom of religion and you exercise it. You don't have to keep it in the closet. And so now what we have is a situation where Christians, they're demanding that Christians keep their faith in the closet. 
And that's a kind of persecution. We don't want to see the pendulum swing back the other way. This is not something that's going to work out good for either group. We've seen this in the past. We don't want to see this in the future. And of course, there is a systemic bias against Christians in the mainstream media, as well as in the District of Criminals in Washington, D.C. We've talked about this many times, of course, going back to July 21st. We had an article on Infowars.com. The persecution of Christians is intensifying as anti-Christian hatred sweeps the entire world. Now, at the time, Michael Snyder's article went down point by point, a lot of different countries. I think there's about 10 countries in this. First one was uh, Iraq. But, of course, in both Afghanistan and Iraq, we had a history in those countries that were predominantly Muslim. We had a history of some toleration of Christianity, more so than in our close ally, Saudi Arabia. There were Christian churches in Afghanistan. There were Christian churches in Iraq. Not after we took over. They have essentially been purged out of those countries. Isn't that telling? Once the United States got in, once the United States uh, set up their puppets, Christianity was gone. I am more concerned about the American attitude towards Christianity than I am the Muslim attitude towards Christianity, quite frankly. But then he goes on to some other countries, Kenya, and of course in Kenya in April of this year, that was where there was the massive attack at a university uh, getting shot up by Muslim terrorists who came across the border. Similar things happening in India and Pakistan where the Muslim terrorists are attacking Christians, Nigeria as well, and then in China. China is an interesting example. Because we can see there, if you're a Christian, if you're another religion, if you're not a religion, you can understand the kind of persecution that we've seen there. And here's the important thing, I think, to take away from China. Of course, people who had non-government approved churches, people who had home churches and other things like that, they were relentlessly persecuted in China. They did, for a while, make accommodations to people who would modify Christianity, modify their Bibles, so that it wasn't threatening to the Chinese communist government. That ended. You cannot make accommodation with the government. Anytime you do that, anytime you allow them to censor your beliefs, to censor your, the exercise of your religion, it will eventually turn out as we saw it turn out in China. Now they are destroying churches. They're pulling down crosses everywhere. Even in Italy, we see Christians being attacked by Muslims. But the key thing is what's happening in America. Alex Jones is going to be reporting in in the next hour with a TSA experience. It's about to get worse, too, folks. You know, if you live in the United States in a short period of time, some states, they're going to require the residents of some states to have a passport. Your driver's license is not going to be sufficient for you to travel within the United States. That's the arbitrary edicts of Homeland Security and ICE and border uh, control. The same people who leave the borders completely open, are not going to allow American citizens to travel within the United States unless they live in a state that complies with real ID. They won't consider your driver's license to be a valid form of ID. That's the way they are cracking down on us. Of course, part of that is being justified by their open borders. So they create a crisis, and here's the solution. We need to have a new national ID for you. I know when I ran through this, these problems with the TSA traveling on my recent vacation, I saw a lot of people having different comments. Look, we just completely boycott flying, they said. I agree. I think we ought to try to boycott flying as much as we should. Let the, air, uh, the airplane companies, the airlines, feel that financial pressure. Nevertheless, there are times when we do need to fly. And here's the other side of that. I refuse to allow them to keep me from moving around. It's, in a one way, it's a defiance. I know it's a very small thing to opt out of the scanner. They still are putting their hands on me to go through this. I still have to get their blessing and their permission. I still have to be treated like a criminal, like a terrorist. I have to prove to them, to their satisfaction, that I'm innocent. And of course, it's all theater. I understand all that. Nevertheless, I do what I can to oppose this at this time until we can get more people with us. We shouldn't have to have a frisk down to travel in this country. I shouldn't have to have a passport to fly within this country. I shouldn't have to have transportation security administration all over this country. And it's not going to be just in the airports. They're going to be out on the highways and byways, and it's going to get even worse. There's going to be cars that are 
snitching on you. They're going to mandate talking cars. That's what the Department of Transportation Washington calls it. It is a process where they are going to be communicating with each other and with the government. We should start calling them snitch cars. I think it's uh, maybe the Stasi highway system. We're going to talk about that in detail as well later in the program. But I want to finish up on this back and forth with Donald Trump, with Obama. Uh, is he somebody that really embraces American values? Of course he isn't. He doesn't embrace traditional American values. Ted Nugent tweeted out, if Obama's a Christian, I'm a gay vegetarian pilot. Look, what's behind all of this? We know that Obama, whether or not you believe that his uh, photoshopped birth certificate is acceptable or not, and we can see the layers of the Photoshop document that was put up there, many other things. We talked about the details of that document. Nevertheless, that, that brings up a question. Why would he give us a phony document? If he's legitimately born in Hawaii, why would they put up a document that was photoshopped that had a lot of anachronisms in it as well as questionable things about the typefaces? If you look at that document, we've broken that down in detail. I don't believe that's a legitimate document. So that raises a lot of flags with a lot of people. But here's what's not in dispute. What's not in dispute is that Obama went to school in Indonesia. He grew up in a family where his mother had deep CIA connections. She hid out, I think, with the um, uh, USAID and the anthropology uh, section, as Wayne Madsen has pointed out. That's where they love to put uh, people in the CIA. We know that both of her parents were uh, connected uh, closely in the OSS, which was the forerunner of the CIA. We know that his father, who adopted him in Indonesia, was connected with the government that was put in place by the CIA, a ruthless government. And as I said before, if you want to know what was going on in Indonesia, we haven't seen this story in the West much about what was going on in Indonesia, what continues to go on in Indonesia, that repressive regime. Look at the film, The Act of Killing. That'll give you some idea of what happened in that country. But then in addition to that, not only did he grow up in this oppressive, brutal CIA-created regime where his father was connected politically high up, but he also went to a Muslim madrasa. That's how he was educated. So when Obama comes to the United States, when he begins his, his campaign in 2000, for the 2008 elections, as the New York Times uh, recounted, of course, there was no video of this, unfortunately, but we do have a New York Times account saying that he began it by uh, doing the Muslim prayers, that makes some people think that uh, maybe he's Muslim, certainly has sympathies to it. He is constantly criticizing Christianity, constantly praising Islam. But of course, he has his gods and they are fiercely worshipped. As one article from uh, Freedom Daily says, Obama will do business with the Tehran Ayatollahs, but not with the Washington Redskins. They point out that the Redskins are considering building a new stadium in Washington, but the Obama administration is going to block the construction of the project on the current RFK Stadium site unless the team changes its nickname. Now, we're not going to block it because of crony capitalism. We're still going to give the billionaires the money to play in their stadiums, but uh, unless you change it for political correctness reasons, he's going to block that for them. I think it ought to be blocked because we shouldn't be subsidizing this. But no, it's all about the name Redskins. So here's what they say. Do chants of death to America offend him less than hail to the Redskins? And they point out that a former Redskin linebacker, London Fletcher, told Breitbart Sports that the nickname had served as a great source of pride to them. He said it meant strength, honor, history, and tradition. And they also point out that on the inaugural Redskins team in 1933, four players and the head coach were Native Americans. And I've seen the same type of thing happen in Florida with the uh, Florida State Seminoles. There were a lot of people that were upset about that, politically correct liberals. And you know what? At the time, and I don't remember how this worked out because I don't really follow football, but I know at the time, some people who were really were Seminoles said, we feel honored by that. We don't want the name changed. I don't know what happened to that uh, particular case in Florida State. I haven't kept up with it. But just look at the difference that we see with this clock team that's being invited into the Obama White House. Now, clearly, the police went over the top in terms of the way they treated this kid. But it looks like this was done possibly to provoke. This is, his father was involved with an Islamic phobic organization. He's made a lot of political statements. And of course, 
you have to wonder why Obama has never had a problem with the police going uh, Stasi on the uh, students in schools with